Today, almost every board is using at least Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So it's super important to use or design really good antennas. And I had no idea you can simulate not only the antennas itself, but you can actually see what will happen with the antenna fields when you place your board inside of a box, or when you place a smartwatch on your hand, or when you place Bluetooth headphones over your head. You can simulate how your head will influence the radiation pattern from the antenna. Wow! I'm not an expert for antenna design or simulation, so I had a call with Marcus from ANSYS. I recorded this call and that's what you will see in this video. We are going to start with a simulation of an antenna placed inside of a coffee machine. So here it is, here is my call with Marcus. The, the problem is often that an engineer needs to put an antenna into such a smart device and then of course the engineer doesn't know how the antenna finally performs yeah you can imagine look at the model i will by the way uh, switch on here uh, switch off the, the the fields of the 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 distributed um of, of the three radiation we will have a look at it later yeah so you see this is a simplified model of this coffee machine which has been done by a colleague yeah you see some parts are modeled of glass, yeah, there's a, a display field here, like a touch screen. You see, we have here the filter. That's the, the water tank upside there. You know, we could even fill it with water. And then inside there's some, some PCB, uh, the heating device, and yeah, the, the fixture also here at the bottom where, where the heating is made, yeah. But imagine, you know, it's just one arbitrary device. It could be also, let's say a washing machine, it could be a smoke detector, or there are, let's say, dozens or hundreds of smart devices on the market. Yeah? And every engineer who needs to place an antenna has the same problem. Yeah? He doesn't know, they don't know how the antenna will operate if it's once it's placed inside the device. Mm -hmm. yeah? You know, an antenna is a very, very sensitive device. By definition, it needs to radiate. And that means it's interacting with its environment, the closest environment. For example, if there's nearby some metal, there will be a strong scattering and feedback effect, and it will detune the antenna. Yeah? Or imagine if there's some water above, which has a very high dielectric constant, it will detune the antenna. Yeah? Similar, like if you have a, a watch or an, 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 a headset, a wireless headset, and you put it on your head, the, the feedback effect of the, the material property of the head will, will have some effect on the antenna. Yeah? And that's something which to many engineers appears to be black magic. And that's why simulation tools are being used and why we can address it, for example, to look uh, also here at uh, field propagation. Yeah? You can see here, this already has been set up. Uh, that means here a small antenna has been mounted into this Can coffee we zoom machine. In on the antenna so, so we will zoom in. I just is. make a, a short video sequence about this, but we will try to zoom in. That's here, by the way, at mm -hmm. the top of the PCB. We will do look at this later, how this will be um, designed. Yeah. So this is a cross section through the, the whole device. And you can see how the fields are propagating, reflected maybe by some parts, guided inside the plastic, you know, it's all the effects coming from the 3D objects with having the different material properties. And yeah. uh, red, uh, and, it means there is the highest density and the blue is where it is not really much. Right. Field. That's the field intensity. You see here it's in volt per meter. I used a logarithmic oh, okay. scale. It's animated over phase and that's correct. Where it's red, that's the highest intensity. This means it's it's very close to this antenna. Yeah, there you have the peak. Yeah, but also for example here you see you have a metal part here. There might be also some quite strong fields, and this is sometimes also an issue if you have EMC uh, effects. That means, for example, that the antenna couples unintended, unintendedly into a PCB in the proximity here or into the, the, the touch screen uh, and then causes some EMC issues. Yeah? Here we can detect hotspots 
which are unintended. Yeah? An antenna should normally radiate into a certain direction where it's intended and hopefully not interact too much with other electronic parts. Yeah? Then it's a really good design of the antenna. Okay. Yeah? So uh, basically but, when uh, you are creating uh, this kind of uh, model for whole system, you take mm -hmm. like 3D model from standard uh, 3D modeling software. Right. And right. here you then assign mm -hmm. materials to exactly. every single component. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be, for example, imported uh, from different uh, formats. You see, there is there's a whole list of, of different format files which can be imported. Yeah. Step is very common. Yeah. And and so for example, uh, we could import uh, just a rough step import. This has been done here in that case. And then, of course, materials have to be assigned. For mm -hmm. example, FR4 for the boards. Mm -hmm. yeah? Or you see there is a whole material library available. We can go to edit. And then, for example, if we need the glass, you see there there is a typical property of glass or of other, other materials like, like certain plastic materials. Mm -hmm. We see water. Yeah? The, that's the high permittivity. So there's a whole library of materials available which can be used and assigned to each object. Wow. Yeah. So basically, yeah. engineers can use this software to see the field in real situation because right. Like, right. that's why but it's let's say super the, important. The, the pre hmm? Yeah. The precondition is, of course, you must have the geometry from that um, device in this case here, the coffee machine, but it could be also something different. Yeah? But the, the hard and the more challenging point for the antenna engineer is, or for the engineer is, what is the best choice for the antenna and to design an antenna? Yeah? Because um, a decision needs to be made. Yeah? You can imagine one of the major decisions of an antenna engineer is, shall I buy an existing antenna for example, a ceramic antenna, which which I can buy from different vendors on the market, or should I design the antenna myself and design it into the PCB? Yeah. And also, what and of kind course, of antenna? Because there are many different shapes right. with different parameters. Right. There are multiple different shapes. Of course, this needs some basic knowledge, but there are some types available on the market which are very well suited. And this is, for example, such an what you see here, a so-called inverted F antenna. Yeah? And this means we have here a feeding line. Sorry, I need to select the according part. That's here the feeding. On one side, it's grounded. And the advantage of such an inverted F antenna is you can quite easily tune the resonance frequency by the length. And the impedance matching can be done by the spacing from uh, the, the feeding line and the ground line. Yeah. And you can do but, all this mm -hmm. inside of this software. Right, right. And there's even more we can do because, for example, the length or the resonant frequency depends, of course, on the material of the FR4 board. It depends on the, on the thickness of the PCB. And there is one approach, and this is regular part of the software, in this case, HFSS. And that means we can start from scratch and synthesize such an antenna. Yeah? And this is something I want to show you. And then we can copy and paste the synthesized antenna into the geometry. Yeah? And mm -hmm. then maybe it needs some adjustment because typically if there's some metal besides it or some plastic material, the antenna will be somehow detuned. That's what I said earlier because of the, the proximity effects. But then it's easy to, to, for example, do a parametric study or an optimization. This but I think we should... Because, yeah. uh, for example, I thought that once you design the antenna on PCB, that it's going to be always tuned. But I, I never really thought that when you place the mm. board close to different metal, then you basically uh, need to tune the antenna again. Right. Yeah. Well, the antenna has typically a, a reactive zone. That means it's in the immediate vicinity where also the, let's say the field energy is stored. And if something changes in that area, yeah, then the antenna is very sensitive to it. So does it mean we can that have... sometimes people may think they design perfect antenna for smartwatch, but basically when they put the smartwatch on hand, 
then the antenna may not really work as they it design. it may be the case yeah let's say if the antenna is not designed properly there are some design rules for example if the antenna is more shielded towards uh, the the changing material or the hand it means you have maybe a ground plane underneath then of course the antenna is less, less sensitive wow. and doesn't have such strong effects wow. yeah Okay, but first, it's always you need we, to, to start. I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, before we move a little bit further, yeah. I would like to mention what kind of software you are using. Okay, this is the software HFSS from ANSYS. Yeah, it's part of the, the ANSYS Electronics desktop. Yeah, you see I'm using here the Electromagnetic Suite 2022 R1, which is the most recent. And the module I'm using is HFSS. This is, stands for High Frequency Structure Simulator and is on the market a very well established tool for that and is commonly seen as the golden standard with respect to accuracy yeah? because mm -hmm. it uses a so-called auto adaptive mesh refinement that's something we can also look at a bit later on this means the user does not need to take care about uh, special mesh settings yeah? it will be controlled that the uh, results are accurate what can you do systems. inside of this soft software well, we can load different geometries, like you saw here 3D geometries, but we can also use load printed circuit boards with components. We can assign uh, excitations and boundaries, you know, for example, for absorbing, uh, or if you want to put in resistors, capacitors. And then we can calculate the S parameters. This means reflection and transmission loss. We can look at field propagation. We can see radiation effects. This means every quantity or result which is related to propagating fields and either matrix outputs or field outputs can be calculated. Yeah? For example, how many power gets dissipated in, in which part of the, the component. Yeah? Sometimes it's, it's good to know if, if an antenna is, for example, here in the headset, yeah? it's good to know how many power gets dissipated in the tissue of the brain or in the head yeah that can be clearly calculated and that's that's all very important so but it's does all it mean from maxwell's equation yeah so does it mean uh, this software is not only for antennas you can basically use it also to simulate i don't know fields around transmission lines or something right like right yeah mm -hmm. we, we can analyze emc effects and many more things Maybe if we shortly look at the component libraries, this helps a little bit. Yeah. So there is, for example, if we talk about uh, EMC effects, there is, uh, let's say, we can, for example, ha we have a library of, of looking, for example, here you see a table that's a parameterized object here for a, uh, for a, a table with a, with a measurement cable. And we can, for example, place, if it's, intended we can place a, a measurement antenna yeah it's now wow. we need to orient it in a different way and then like in a measurement chamber get the emc radiation out of that yeah so the user wow. doesn't need to start from scratch yeah okay, just but, one example but but today but, we are going to talk about antennas right we talk about antenna and that's something we want to look at but first we start really from scratch you know that's okay. for some some engineers it's a pain if we need to start from scratch, if we don't have anything, uh, but that is what, what simplifies an engineer's life. Yeah? And what I want to show you, let's assume we want to design a PIFA antenna for ISM frequency. This means typically Bluetooth at 2.45 gigahertz for a FR4 substrate of 1.57 millimeter thickness. Yeah? This is our task and we have nothing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we want to embed it in the coffee machine. Yeah? Okay. That's our task. And I want to make a short live demo about this. Yeah? So there is this antenna toolkit. And this allows, let's say, from scratch to synthesize an antenna. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That means we don't have any preconditions about it. And you see the, the types of the antenna. Yeah? There are, if we look, for example, here, bow tie uh, spiral antennas. So there are multiple types. Also, if we look uh, slot antenna, that's something which sometimes is is needed. Yeah? Or um, there are patch antennas, all which which can be found in, in in textbooks. But we want to look at 
a, an antenna type which is very common for mobile devices, which is called PIFA, which I've shown earlier. Mm -hmm. And you see there is a, a kind of preview and we can enter the frequency. We want to have, let's say, 2.45 gigahertz. Uh, by default here, it's the Duroid, which is far too expensive. We change to FR4 epoxy, the thickness we can keep. Yeah? So it's, it's about 1.57 millimeters. We change to FR4 epoxy and we want to do it at 2.45 gigahertz. Okay, yeah? so this is everything then, what, what we need to... Yes, what we need to do, yeah? right. And we will, if we press the synthesis button, then you will see the suggested initial lengths they will change. Yeah? You see now mm -hmm. the value has changed. And if we go to finish, then automatically a model will be created. We can now here exit the wizard. And the nice thing is that everything is set up. Also some solution set up, some results. I will go to analyze because it will go very fast. It should maybe take not more than, I guess, 30 seconds. And so you see, we have here a pre-definition of the different plots of S-parameter return loss. Wow, so you, you don't even plots. need to set up the simulation. That's right, yeah. And you see the auto-adaptive mesh refinement, which I mentioned earlier, will be done. That means the software adds with every pass a certain number of mesh elements. You see, it starts here with a number and then increases step by step about 30% uh, each step until the change of the S parameters is less than a certain value and then it's finished. Yeah. So you see the solution time here, it's an extremely simple project, was about yeah, 30 seconds on my notebook. Uh, so it's it, not a workstation. Finished. The simulation is finished. It's finished. It's finished. Yeah. And we have here the return loss. You see it's about 2.45 gigahertz. That's the Smith chart. And we see here also the plot at the frequency in 3D and 2D plots. Yeah? But it's, it's a really a very, very simple design. Yeah? And that solves fast. If, if we have a more complex design, of course, it takes longer. Yeah? So but basically, the, the, what, what do we need to do now? We need to just take the dimensions of this antenna, which was calculated and place it to our PCB? Right. It's a bit different. It's a bit different. What we do, we will uh, copy and paste the antenna uh, into the um, into the design, and this is what I do next. And it's it's quite straightforward, because what we what we need to do is, so we go to the geometry, we, we close the other plots that's not needed anymore. Uh, what I will take is, we have here, you see the antenna, mm -hmm. and I want to copy and paste it into the design with the coffee machine. You see, oh, I have here you a can place coordinate it system. To the coffee machine. Yeah, you see, we have here, that's what I've done as preparation that I put here a coordinate system, a local coordinate system. And we go here, I, you see, select object, I create a a rectangle and you will see we have here parameters for the antenna the length spacing there there are geometry dimensions which can be changed and this parametric information will be also copied over to the target design so what i'm doing now is i'm selecting just the pifa antenna edit copy and then we go here into the into the coffee machine you will see there will be some offset. It will not be put exactly, but we can here go edit paste. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, yeah, it's it's okay. It is fine so far. Maybe I, I have here a version with a with a ground and a micro strip. This can be deleted. Yeah, but you see, it's now placed here near the this PCB. Yeah. And then it's ready to solve. Yeah, we can start solving. And this, of course, I have already done because this does not take 30 seconds. This takes a bit more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so, if we want to take a, a look at it, and I can 
close the other. I think it's it's here. That's another part which I've already solved. Mm -hmm. So that's the same project, yeah. but you already run the simulation. It's the same project uh, with copy and paste, and I've solved it. We can look at the solution time on my notebook. You see, it's not dramatic. It was about 17 minutes, mm -hmm. but it's too long to, to show here during the webinar, mm -hmm. yeah, the recording. Yeah. It also used this convergence. This means it made the auto adaptive mesh refinement. And um, it now um, contains, for example, the return loss. And this is now the interesting thing. And this is very typical. You see the resonance frequency has shifted mm -hmm. downwards. Yeah? And this is very, very typical because you see we have here some parts. We have the surrounding uh, plastic body in the vicinity. Yeah? It's, or it's even a metal body, yeah, which is worse. Yeah, I, I didn't realize before that it's metal, but it is. Yeah, so it's really a worst case. And also, you see here, this cylinder is made of some. Uh, it's 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 made of metal, and this means it definitely detunes the antenna. Yeah, and very often the resonance frequency gets lower. Yeah, because of either dielectric loading or because of capacity effects to the metal. Yeah, if we want to optimize it or to to change it. Uh, we could access here, you see, the the length of the antenna. So it's feet length, one moment. Uh, I'm not so familiar. Okay, it's length one. So for example, I will not do it. I, I just enter a value for demonstration purpose. Oh, it's see, longer. it's yeah, now too see. long. It's protruding out, yeah? it's too long, but you see the parameterization is kept. Yeah. So what we could do now, I will not do it right now. Yeah. We could set up an optimization algorithm and say, for example, optimize the S parameters maybe at 2.45 to a good matching or the gain. I will not do it here, but it's possible. Yeah. And we can use the parameterized uh, design as we have copied and pasted it here. So yeah? it means you can say like, optimize the length of this or calculate the optimum length of this antenna for this specific situation it's and it right. will basically yeah. mm -hmm. adjust the length of the antenna mm -hmm. to move the exactly uh, exactly resonance. yeah that's it yeah and that's the goal of it and then we are at the moment what i have shown initially that's this design here you know where i've shown to you with the PFA antenna initially, uh, and then you can visualize the, the, the fields like uh, here in a cut plane, yeah, or the the radiation pattern, yeah. That's that's what what, what I've shown before, yeah. But I want to point out the steps, the design flow, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can synthesize it according to the material property and the thickness of the PCB. Then you have the synthesized antenna, you copy and paste it, yeah? and afterwards it, it will be detuned in most cases. It's, it's no question. But then you can, if you don't want to optimize, you can do a single parametric, uh, let's say, analysis, and for example, in steps of 0.2 millimeter, increase the length of the antenna, and then to see until you get a good uh, resonance. Mm -hmm. that area, is, yeah? I think we should stop for a moment because. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think um, everyone who is watching the video should like realize what just happened because this was amazing. Like you don't need to know you, you right. basically nothing about antennas. You just select yes. from the library mm -hmm. an yes. antenna which you would like to use. You mm -hmm. you write down for what frequency you need this antenna. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, then uh, the wizard will set up will... all the simulations right. and everything. Yes. Uh -huh. you, don't, you don't need to understand how to simulate the antenna or what to set up because the wizard will set it up. Yeah. You just run right. the simulations. Mm -hmm. And once you are happy, you just copy and paste this antenna uh -huh. 
to the yes. 3D model yeah. of your whole yeah. system. But you need some some basic antenna understanding, of course. You know yeah. which type to choose and about the placement. That's that's not so easy, yeah. But so it's it you, needs you don't knowledge. need to like calculate it manually. No, or... no, no, no. <laughs> You know, what I did as well is, you know, what we could show, but this is now a, a more extreme case. You see, uh, for example, if if you, we want to analyze the interaction between, let's say, the coffee machine and a smartwatch, yeah, um, then a, a larger scenario could be calculated. Yeah, but this is something then it really takes more time. Yeah, and, and I must say this is not I, I didn't make a complete simulation. Yeah, but you see here the propagating fields. You can see that here the, uh, the the antenna in the coffee machine is at the moment here in the transmission motors. Yeah. So you can even put like more antennas into the same space right. and, right. and yeah. see the interaction. That's something we, right. So I, I, here I just copied and pasted, you know, the coffee machine on the table because, you know, the table is something, an example project we have existing. Also this uh, gentleman with the wireless headset yeah and you can copy and paste a whole group of of elements like here this this antenna yeah and inside the coffee machine and then if you put it on the table uh, you could have also different antennas here in the in the whole environment yeah and and this is what what makes the communication among smart devices so in this case for example you see there is an antenna here in the wristband of the watch. It's not not fine adjusted. You see the size of the watch doesn't really fit here to the human body model. And also here in the headset, see there is another antenna also here, a PIFA antenna. Yeah. It's in the in the headset. Yeah. And this is, but this is a very typical way how uh, such an analysis will be made. Yeah, we can, for example, define here if you want a local coordinate system. We can watch the uh, or the you make a cut plane, and also make here the the fields. And now, for example, I can make the the antenna on the head. The transmitting one. Mm -hmm. So you see, this is at the moment. It's the still the the antenna of the the coffee machine. Mm -hmm. But if I go here and say, for example, this, you know, I ex just excite with a small power. This now takes a little bit time to update because all the tetrahedras in the whole model need to be filled with new information about the field distribution. It changes, of course, you know, if a different antenna gets transmitting, then I don't know, maybe here it's, I can't say half a million mesh elements at the moment. So it, they need to be filled with a new um, information, with a new field distribution. And that's what the software is doing now. It doesn't need to do a complete recalculation. That's important yeah, because it's just a combination of existing solutions. Yeah, Every antenna will be calculated also with respect to field distribution to radiation. And if you turn on and off, or if you simultaneously uh, run different antennas, then it's just a kind of linear combination. Yeah? But nevertheless, as you see, it's a large project. Yeah? Uh, it, and th this is a, a solution which takes uh, maybe, uh, I can't say two hours, three hours yeah, to, to make such an analysis. It's nothing which can be done in, 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 in 30 seconds anymore, uh, which is obviously. But this is also interesting because uh, it could be interesting to see some case studies when you have all these multiple different antennas in one room and how they actually yes. influence each other. Right, right. Yeah. Because well, I have no idea if the, if uh, the influence, the influence is, like is of course. Or not. Right. The influence, of course, is also given by the S parameters there. You can see the coupling among the antennas. Yeah, This is here more just a, a field visualization. Yeah, mm -hmm. But here we can see it. And I turn the gentleman now here as a wireframe. And then you see the, the, the interesting part. And this is typically how the fields propagate uh, inside the 
the, the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also see that the wavelength here is much shorter than in free space. Yeah. The wavelength difference between the maxima and minima in air is, of course, much larger than here in the human tissue. That's because of the, as we are mostly consisting of water. Yeah. And we can exactly do also these SAR, the specific absorption rate calculation, which is not here the main topic. Yeah. But this needs more memory so and, and simulation time. So here we're really talking about, uh, I can look at it. It's sitting at desk with coffee machine. See, it's, yeah, it, it takes about maybe 50 gigabytes of RAM and it was more solution time. Yeah, you see uh, two hours almost here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that, that takes more time yeah. on, on a notebook here, of course. Yeah, it's not a, a powerful workstation. Wow. Okay, so right. let's go back to our project. So uh, mm -hmm. how do we transfer this uh, antenna to our PCB? Well, um, one moment. The Let's antenna... say we are using Cadence software or Altium software or some other software. So we need to somehow get this antenna to our PCB. Okay. This is a this is another good question, which I must check. Yeah. Uh, one moment. I go, for example, here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. This is, a, I would say, a bit delicate question. Yeah. Uh, the reason why is we are here in a 3D geometry. Yeah. And for example, if we go to, to a layout tool like Altium, Kaden, Sukun, or whatever it is, we go back to a two and a half D representation. Yeah. And this is, of course, a more difficult way than going the other way. Yeah, it's it's difficult to understand, but it's easier to go from two and a half D. That means from layout to three D. Yeah, but there is a way, and and I can show it to you. Uh, you know, this is of course it's it's not a real PCB. Please keep in mind it's a it's a simple, a strongly simplified one. What I'm doing is I copy the PCB into another blank design. So we just have now the PCB here. A moment, it's here. There are maybe some remaining parts which we don't need. Yeah. And there is a functionality. It's, I must say it's quite simple, but, but we don't have so many options for exporting. Yeah. We can export this in, let's say, a quite generic par, uh, format like um, DXF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you will get the dimensions of the antenna. Right, right. And or uh, the other option is to export this in, in GDS2. A moment, it's um, here. I think DXF should be kind of standard. I think right, right. This is standard, and and then you can you can use it. Yeah, it, but it, it doesn't contain the parametric information mm -hmm. anymore. It's uh. fine. It's we just, have just the we, dimensions. Right, right. We have tools where we can also make a back annotation yeah, to the layout tool. Yeah, for example, with Sukun, it's working with CR eight thousand. Yeah, but let's say this is in a quite early stage. There we can also really back annotate directly. But if it's not done in that way, for example, with, with DXF or GDS, we mm -hmm. can do the, the, then take the information. Perfect. And uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, when we were talking together, you don't have to use or you don't have to create PCB antenna. You can actually use, for example, existing solutions right. from other right. providers. Yeah. So how does mm -hmm. it work? Mm -hmm. Right. This is a, a complete different approach. And I must look at it one moment. Maybe we can delete here, go back and delete maybe this antenna, get rid of this. There is a possibility to uh, use existing antennas on the market. Yeah? And you know yourself that there are several companies which offer antennas which can be even soldered as, as an SMD device. Uh, you can 
it's, it's a small ceramic antenna and you can just yeah, pick and place it. Yeah. And we also, there is a library available of these antennas and this can be invoked using component libraries. Mm -hmm. And if you want, uh, for example, I, I can start with a, with a very, very simple demo and then we can look at also okay. feedback for the coffee machine. Okay. Yeah? But now I get here a different call. And uh, I start with a, I must look which of the open examples it is because I have several projects open. It's always a bit the problem if I have multiple projects on my machine. Yeah, I start with a, with a very simple demonstrator and So I, I start with a generic small port. You see here, for example, we have a, a very simple printed circuit board. It's another, uh, a simple test case. Yeah, you see here, it's a, a, a micro strip line. We have here the ground on the PCB and here a solder pad. Yeah, that's, that's a generic starting point. It could be also the PCB of our coffee machine. Yeah, what we can do we can invoke now the component libraries. And there we already, we see there are different component vendors. For example, you see there's the company Johansson, which is known. And you see there, for example, Bluetooth, Zigbee, uh, other ISM antennas, UWB, Wi-Fi antennas. There, there are different types, you know, it's from their uh, list, yeah. But there's also, for example, you see, from, from TDK, they have also here, you see 2.4 uh, Wi-Fi, WiMAX antennas. They're, they're also offered models. Also, if we stay at this, there is, for example, Molex. You see also they offer a series of Wi-Fi antennas, ISM antennas here around 860 antenna megahertz. Yeah? Or for example, Wirt Electronic, they also recently offered RF components and here also a link to their chip antennas. Mm -hmm. yeah? There are many more vendors available who offer this not inside the software, but where you can maybe ask them and they will send the, the types. But I need to explain how that works. Let's go, for example, to the Johansson device yeah? and assume we're going to go to Bluetooth. And if I select this component, I can just drag and drop it and it will be placed according to the chosen target coordinate system. And you see the target coordinate system has been set here on this solder pad. So I just need to drag and drop. And then you see there's the, the company vendor emblem from Johansson. And what you see is this is their antenna and it looks like you purchase it. Yeah. It means you can see the exterior of that antenna, but it is encrypted. Mm -hmm. Encryption means you, you do not have access to the interior geometry and you do not have access to the materials they're using. That means they're pro, uh, uh, protected special no, ceramics, yeah, which is their mm -hmm. own property. Yeah? You don't get access to it, but you can simulate it. Mm -hmm. This is again what I have done. And you see that CS parameter, you can get the, the, the plot of the uh, radiation pattern, or you can see in the cup field, the, the field, you know, it's the electric field in this case. Yeah? So you, you, you can handle it like the real geometry of this antenna is placed on this PCB with the only difference you as a user do not have access to the interior of this antenna, which means it keeps the intellectual property of the vendor. Mm -hmm. yeah? I've also chosen another one. This is another from Johansson. It looks a bit similar, but it's a different type. And you see this has a slightly different resonance. Yeah, It's mm -hmm. a bit up. That means if we would bring this antenna in the proximity of a dielectric, for example, if we would have a dielectric cover, very likely then the resonance frequency would shift downwards. Mm -hmm. uh, that you need to check on that data sheet. 
of this uh, vendor. Yeah? In the same way, like I've shown on this uh, very simple uh, demonstration board, in the same manner, you can place it into the coffee realistic machine, machine let's say mm -hmm. into the coffee machine. In this case, you know, I don't want only to, to promote one vendor. We need a little bit to have a, a equalized uh, distribution among the vendor. I took here the Wirt antenna, which looks very, very similar. You see it's here, the, the, the emblem, and it has been placed at the end of this micro strip. And if you look at the coffee machine, it has very, very similar properties. You see, if you look at the fields, the E field, the hotspot is now here at the end of this antenna. It's radiating out. Yeah. We have here again, radiation pattern. And like before we could superimpose the radiation pattern and we see it's mainly radiating out to the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. So does it mean the procedure, that ideally, yeah, is very for simple. example, we would like to place mm -hmm. the board 45 degrees rotated in this, or at least the antenna should go maybe. Uh... Right. We we could do it, of course. Yeah. Um, I I will do it. I I will then delete the solutions, which is not dramatic. Yeah. But oh, we I don't have to do could... it right now. I, yeah, I yeah. only. No, no, I, I can do it. One moment. Okay. It's 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 simple. I just hide here the uh, this radiation pattern. So this is something. Then it's it's easier uh, to see. So a moment. No, HFSS, and uh, we go to fields, and plot fields. I, I just hide here this superimposed mm -hmm. fields. And because the, the the antenna is selected here as a component, yeah. And what we can do is, so you were asking for rotating. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense in this, yeah. But if we want, just for fun, we could rotate it. You see here by forty-five degrees, yeah. And it's the same component. Yeah. It doesn't fit, of course, here now to the to the pet. It would have a different characteristic, mm -hmm. slightly shifted resonance frequency, but you can do it. You can move it around. You can rotate it parametrically, and you can you can study this. Another possibility would be that we, for example, would uh, rotate the whole board. Mm -hmm. yeah? That that's also possible, yeah? mm -hmm. or even parts of the 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 coffee machine could be parametrically changed. Yeah? Okay. But the idea is. You have a component from a vendor, like here from Johansson, from TDK, from Wirt Electronic. You embed it into an environment, yeah, and then you can study how it gets detuned, how the resonance frequency shifts a little bit. You know, that's the most normal. If you have an existing antenna and you place it into another environment, yeah, that there will be some change of the resonance frequency and, of course, a change of the radiation pattern which in this case here is most, mostly due to this uh, the cylinder we have looked at. One moment, it's the, the other cylinder. Deep water. Moment, it was the cylinder here, you see, mm -hmm. or is the base bottom. Uh, it's proximity here. Yeah. So there is, there is of course, an, a, a feedback effect uh, based on the cylinder and it, it detunes the antenna definitely. Yeah but it can be embedded and you can analyze if you want uh, at different positions. Yeah. Okay. Again, we so, can look here at the calculation time. Again, here it was 23 minutes, but it's similar like for the previous antenna, the PIFA antenna. So right? I would like Very to similar. ask, uh, mm -hmm. we have this 3D model, we can see all these fields. So can we talk a little bit about what these fields can tell us? Just like, you know, if you would be a hardware design engineer and you would like to right, be sure right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the antenna placement and, and power is okay. Yeah. So what do you would be looking for? Right. For example, if I would be an, an antenna and an engineer, yeah, I would be very concerned that, for example, there might be some hotspots and that's what we're already seeing here at neighboring devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see here, 
I, that's the yellow color is... around the corners. Right, yeah. As I said earlier, you see we have here a logarithmic scale. Red is the, the, the strongest field intensity. Red is still, uh, yellow is still quite intense. And let's say this bright green and blue is, is a lower intensity. Yeah? Please keep in mind, uh, it is a, a logarithmic scale. Yeah? This means it looks a bit more uh, intense than mm -hmm. it is if we change to linear. Yeah? And you see it's, it's mainly here the hotspot around the antenna. Maybe some hotspot here, yeah, but the rest already seems quite cold. Yeah. Uh, in these hotspots, they are wrong mm -hmm. because they are taking energy from the antenna, or why we are looking uh, for. I this? would say no, it's it's a natural consequence of the proximity because we have conducting objects in the vicinity of the antenna. Yeah, so it's really a natural effect. You cannot avoid it. Yeah, you you cannot say it's it's wrong. Yeah, but it will cause a strong interaction with the antenna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my opinion, there would be better places mm -hmm. to position this antenna. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I, as an engineer, would be concerned that, for example, uh, we could make a different cut plane. Uh, let's say we have here, you see it's here, this, the, the screen, the, the display. And for example, if in that area, if there would be hotspots, that could be critical. Yeah? Why? Uh, why is because then at the board, uh, I make now here a new coordinate system. And while we are talking, I make um, a cut plane here yeah, and, and make a, a plot because at that board, it's not intended to have high field intensities. Yeah? This is something which should be avoided. Yeah? And of course, it's difficult to say does this have a, a harmful effect or not? Here you see, for example, this is a, a bent, a kind of, of flex PCB, you know, where we have some conductors. Yeah? And this is also if some, for example, some signals propagate from the large PCB to this um, LCD PCB. Yeah? And if we have some resonances here, for example, on the flex board, that might be something which is causing troubles for propagating signals. Mm -hmm. yeah? and so basically, is does it where... mean like the antenna may kind of damage the signals going through this flex? Right, right. Yeah. Of course, most of the signals they are propagating at much lower frequencies. Yeah, maybe a few dozens of megahertz, not more. Yeah. So I think there's not so much uh, where we need to be concerned, but there are many applications where let's say, imagine if the antenna is radiating uh, at a lower ISM band, maybe 433 megahertz, and you have signals propagating um, or the harmonics of the signals are propagating in that frequency, yeah? then it might be really an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah? So basically it's not that there should be no here. this orange color around the cable, because if there is orange color around the cable, it means it is interacting with the antenna. Right. The, I would say there is a risk. Yeah. Okay. If I would have the choice, I would have placed the board uh, somewhere at a remote position. Yeah. Maybe outside the cylinder here at that mm -hmm. side. Yeah. Uh, at the opposite side, maybe of the the LCD display. Yeah. But that's that's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah? Then we would have less interaction between the antenna and this touchscreen PCB. Yeah. But that's not the purpose here okay. uh, of that uh, analysis. But that's how an engineer, an antenna engineer would, or an EMC engineer would look at it uh, to study it more careful if the placement maybe could be done at another position. Okay. And uh, how this simulation will tell us where uh, will be good reception around this coffee machine? Sorry, you mean a good? Good uh, reception, reception, like reception. Uh, I mean, okay. like uh, you, you mm. know, <clears throat> uh, the field like around this coffee machine, right? Like where mm. well, uh, where mm. you should uh, place the receiver or transmitter, which is right. on the other side. Well, you know, one uh, level of information is what we shown earlier is the the far field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there is, it's here superimposed, yeah? Okay. Please be, please be aware 
um, this is maybe a bit misleading. This far field is superimposed because it shows the directions of the radiation. Mm -hmm. yeah? A far field is really measured far away mm -hmm. from the antenna. This means typically in a measurement chamber, let's say in a distance of something like three meter, and then the field intensity, the radiation intensity is mapped to the color here. Yeah? But it is, of course, not what you have here in the immediate vicinity of the antenna. There we are still in the near field. It's really what you would measure in maybe a few meters distance. Yeah? But nevertheless, it shows you have, if you have a top view, it shows there is some distribution also to the sides. Of course, a strong part of the radiation is going up, yeah? mm -hmm. which is a good measure for the uh, propagation. Yeah? But what you uh, could do, of course, but this is more time consuming, you could also simulate uh, the, the mounting of the coffee machine in a larger scenario. Yeah? And I've done this. I just need to, to look where it is and need to open it. It's in a different project. I need to, to search a little bit here. Okay, maybe I close some other designs. This was the Johnson, which I don't need to show. <clears throat> okay. And here is, oh no, I've closed the wrong one. This was unintentionally. That's the problem if I have too many things open. File open. I need to, to, to reopen at the moment. But basically, but red means uh, there will be the best place to have the other receiver or transmitter, correct? And not it's, below let's the say, machine. Um, as I said, we are here, the field is only the immediate near field. Yeah? And this is not usually not representative okay. if you want to look at the interaction. Okay. It's better to look at the far field. Okay. Yeah? What you could do is this kind of example, uh, which shows really the propagation, for example, oh, of the okay. field. Yeah? Here we see the antenna in the coffee machine is in the TX modus, which means it's transmitting. And we see here the propagating field into the vicinity, mm -hmm. for example, also how it is here at the this other user equipment like the headset or nearby this uh, antenna inside the, the smartwatch. So yeah, this just as view an example. will show mm -hmm. us the distribution of the radiation in like bigger space like in, in, in right, room right but the previous yeah. one it was just mm -hmm. some kind of i don't know what right but uh, to be honest this looks nice for marketing yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> normally you look on the far field okay pattern you know you try to have it quite smooth you try to avoid drops in the far field that's normally what an antenna engineer would look like mm -hmm. yeah what i'm showing you here is more what a marketing mm -hmm. guy would look at, yeah, but because still... it takes quite long to solve, and it's not a representative placement. Yeah, it's it's one of many placements like on the table. Yeah, but still, so like it's, it's a special case. Far field. If we are talking about I don't know five ten meters, uh, in yeah. reality, you can be like one meter from the coffee ma coffee mm -hmm. machine. Right, right. Well, the the other possibility is. We have uh, also the possibility for for near field, mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, okay. we can, so can set also up far field and also near field. Near field, right? Near field definition means this needs to be defined. So we can, for example, say how the the near field on a sphere, for example, in one meter distance will look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, I set now a sphere. Uh, nf one meter yeah we we can have a resolution in space for example we look at every five degrees it needs to be defined and then we can make a near field report also a 3d polar plot and then you see we can for example look at the 
um, at the field total or we have polarization contents, left hand, right hand, X, Y, Z, phi, theta. I just look for uh, the, the near field total. Mm -hmm. We look at the last adaptive frequency, which is here the 2.45 uh, gigahertz. And what we look at now is it looks a bit similar or like the it's, far field, it's but finished, it's not the same. It's done. Done. It, it's just post-processing. Yeah. And you see the strongest radiation in, in one meter distance goes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is of course in this case clear. Yeah. It is because of this uh, mounting here inside this aluminum cylinder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As I said, I would not place it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it means the strongest radiation will go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's not a real coffee machine, yeah. yeah. And I think you will not find such a machine on the market uh, with such a placement, yeah. It should be, but this explains why please. most of the majority uh, is is going up here, yeah. But as you see, it's some some metal body, yeah, which maybe it has it should have been done due to uh, shielding or I, I don't know, yeah. I wouldn't have placed the antenna there. It's just a demonstrator. And this explains why also in the near field, the main radiation is going up. Yeah. Please yeah, don't see this as a very realistic uh, model. It's, it's not really a realistic one. So you can it's... simulate near field, you can simulate uh, far field, field you yes. can do yes. any kind of simulations. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. And near field shows, this is representing the, the field in volts per meter. Here, I don't have a specific uh, uh, polarization content, uh, if you would have a near field scanner in one meter distance, that's uh, of course related to this coordinate system, that's what you would measure. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I think you had also demo with the smartwatch. Right. This is another project, you know, this is uh, another smart device. It's again, not a realistic watch. Yeah because otherwise uh, we could, um, th that would in contain some, some IP of a customer. So it's here, you see the ANSYS logo. It's just a, it's a generic example, mm -hmm. which we can also hand out to customers. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's why we have a set of such projects available. They are not IP protected. It's like reality. We can hand it this out for training purposes. And you see in this case, the antenna is here in the wristband. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also something I personally would not do because it's directly then exposed to the, to the arm. Yeah. And you can see we have, we have here some resonances of the antenna. Yeah. And so that would be the closest to the ISM band. We can see here the radiation pattern here at 2.45 gigahertz. Also the 3D model? Okay. We can superimpose it again. That's then easier to understand if we superimpose it, because this gives the context about how the maximum, uh, maybe I make a larger scale, or we make a larger scale of one. Yeah, that's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we see, for example, here to this direction, yeah, we see a drop mm -hmm. in the radiation pattern. And if you place that's normally inside something... of the watches, is, is it going to change? Pardon what? If you place hand inside uh, of the yeah. smart watches, mm -hmm. is okay. this going to change? Right. I have done it here. You see, <laughs> this done. is a, a model, a model of the hand. Yeah. It has some tissues. We have a, 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 a model of the human body. And the nice thing is, it, we talked earlier about material properties. It contains the frequency dependent material properties of the different tissue types, for example, of bones, of muscle. Yeah. And because over frequency, it goes up to 10 gigahertz starting from I don't know, a few kilohertz and it's changing over the frequency. And this has been taken into account here. Yeah. And of course the effect is that if you place it like uh, nearby such a body of the human hand, 
it of course again changes you see it changes resonance frequency a lot but also the radiation pattern which i have not done in this case we can do it it's it's can be done quite easy i usually do a, a resolution of five degrees so we here we define the far field monitoring and then we can make a far field 3d polar plot again we don't make any choice of the polarization which mm -hmm. we could do last adaptive is at 2.45 gigahertz so we keep it as it is and we see it looks quite different i will again superimpose it and i think the reason is that the side which goes towards the tissue yeah there we will have an, an, a drop in the radiation performance yeah because that really gets absorbed by the hand yeah we superimpose it again then it's easier to comprehend but i'm quite sure yeah that there is you see the strongest radiation is more outwards mm -hmm. into the direction of the surface of the watch mm -hmm. but we have here a quite strong drop and also the other side which is on the remote side of the arm is definitely lower yeah mm -hmm. it could uh, increase the size please always keep in mind it's far field yeah mm -hmm. it's not been measured here few centimeters away from the hand it's a bit misleading yeah mm -hmm. the, the 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 plot it's really what you measure in a large distance it shows like only the directional the distribution head. right right yeah this is a bit misleading and some people uh, misinterpret such a superimposed plot but at yeah? least it gives you an idea mm -hmm. what directions the right right the direction mm -hmm. yeah? the intensity and the direction mm -hmm. is is shown yeah? otherwise you just need to look at the uh, plot alone yeah, mm -hmm. without but here hands, you, you can't see um, where is the top of the watches yeah and an antenna engineers knows it exactly because we have in the coordinate system the axis yeah x y z yeah it's it's it can't be seen here very well yeah and an antenna engineer of course knows exactly uh, you know phi and theta uh, is exactly known yeah mm -hmm. relative to the coordinate system Wow, I would right. I, I would never say the software like this exists. <laughs> yeah, well, this is kind of, of standard in the meantime um, to solve it. And also uh, the question about accuracy and uh, is, is, is not risen anymore. What are the typical challenges, let's say nowadays is to have a, a simple setup maybe an automated analysis, automated parametric studies. That's what, what antenna engineers are looking at today. And, and to have an easy access to library models, this means people don't want to spend much time with setting up. Yeah, yeah because That's, the antenna because is only is, small part of a mm, huge system. Right. And... Of a, a large system, yeah. Uh, you know, you know, an electronic engineer he maybe has to design the PCB. He has to take care about the signal propagation, EMC, whatever. Yeah, uh, maybe this antenna design is only a few percent of a typical engineer's work. Yeah, and so the demands from the market today is yeah that this kind of setup can be done in a very short mm -hmm. time. Yeah, we could see it. <laughs> yeah, this is some approaches. There's more. Uh, techniques available but but hopefully it shows a little bit you know that you as an electrical engineer you don't need to spend hours with the design or with with different studies of the antenna placement it can be done quite fast the other aspect is you don't need to be an expert of the meshing yeah for all these examples i've shown to you you see here the software makes the automatic control of the auto adaptive mesh refinement this means the if you look at the at the tetrahedras, I can also visualize it if you want. Yeah, the, the mesh elements. Mm -hmm. So we can plot the mesh here. Mesh See? is the net of all the points. Yeah. I guess. Right. This is here the, the, the tetrahedras, you know, and it gets refined in areas where it's really needed. Yeah. And normally in, in remote areas. 
there is no need to make a, a fine mesh. Mm -hmm. yeah? We can also make a so-called clip plane and look more a bit inside the model. The, this is then you cut off his the, hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we cut it off. We only look at the mesh, you see. Yeah. But if you do an intense study, then you see the, the main refinement will be made in areas where it's really relevant for the radiation. Yeah. And that's the, the message I want to give. As a user, you don't really need to take mm -hmm. care that much about the accuracy of the mesh. This has all been taken into account in HFSS by these auto-adaptive mesh refinement, which is a very, very reliable procedure. That means you don't need to be an expert there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do 20 we years have, ago, it was a bit different. What do we have in this project manager panel? I'm just curious because, you know, when I can talk to you, I, I'm just curious to see what is there right. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so how well, do you set up that these shows simulations, here, for example? For example, some, some boundaries. <clears throat> you see, this is the absorbing boundary. It's a kind of very small anechoic chamber. You know, we don't need to model a, a large anechoic mm -hmm. chamber. We can go as close as maybe a quarter of the wavelengths. Yeah. So these are the then, cones which are in EMC chamber, I guess. That's... Right. It's the it's it's a simplified. Uh, it's more a mathematical absorption model. Mm -hmm. yeah? Then you see here, for example, we have the excitation, and this is the feeding. Uh, of the where the the energy gets injected mm -hmm. you see it's here a simple micro strip line it's meshed here yeah? and and this is where the the, the power input is being made here yeah? then here you can see this is the analysis setup with the frequency span here you have a possibility to define the accuracy this means that's the maximum change of s parameters during adaptive refinement yeah the more accurate you set it, of course, the more simulation time you need. Mm -hmm. yeah? Then you have here in the uh, in the project manager, you can have access to, if you want to make parametric studies, I don't know if there are any, uh, there are some parameters. Yeah? For example, if you want to study relative placement of the antenna relative to the hand, you could study it. Or if you want to change, for example, material properties, you could make parametric studies or so do an parametric studies. Yeah. It means it will automatically, mm -hmm. for example, move or change a parameter right. and you would see all right. the kind of yes. results. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, for example, uh, you know, I, I will not, I will just do it for demo. Yeah. I will mm -hmm. then do an undo because I delete my results. For example, if I change my position, yeah, if I want to alter the position of the uh, watch, On the I hand. do it. One moment, mm -hmm. and you see, I need, I need to hide now the, again the plot. One moment, because otherwise we really can't see what's, what's happening. And okay, I made it. One moment, it was too much, twenty millimeter. If I don't put uh, the units in, it will be the. SI units, mm -hmm. and as everyone knows, the SI units is millimeter, is meter, sorry. Yeah. So now you see it's intersecting, which means it doesn't physically make sense. It would be different direction, I guess, maybe X or Z. Yeah, right. So you would um, be it could it be behind. right, maybe in X, maybe 20 millimeters. Now this time I take the millimeter. You see now mm -hmm. this has been mm -hmm. put into a different position. And then we could make a parametric analysis and look how it affects the return loss or the radiation pattern. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Of course, maybe at the hand, it's not so interesting. Usually it's more near the head. That position is, is often more interesting for antennas. And well, there of course, I could also change material properties parametrically. Mm -hmm. Like you see here, the exterior that's now here, for example, polyester, I could change the dielectric permittivity or the antenna uh, length. of this, of the, or I could change the antenna length if mm -hmm. it's parametrized. In this case, it's not parametrized, mm -hmm. yeah? but it could be done. Yeah? By the way, uh, there are very easy ways, you know, if I just look at the, at the antenna, yeah? there are extremely easy ways, even if I import the geometry to parametrize this, 
for example, if you see that it's a meander length, if I want to change the length of the antenna, I can just select the faces. You see, I just mm -hmm. make a face selection. I select here the, the end faces. Oh, sorry, I think it's a sheet. I, I can't demo it, it's a sheet object. Mm -hmm. If it would be a solid, I could show it to you. Yeah, but it's usually quite easy to to change, uh, to make parametric changes of existing geometries. Yeah, maybe this one is not so suited here. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then you have here inside the geometry, of course, all the post-processing properties, like the what I've shown to you, the S parameters, and um, the gain. Yeah. So can these be, are basically the results of the simulation. Right, results so post-processing. That can be all done here inside, mm -hmm. inside the pros, progress uh, mm -hmm. the project. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. I have changed some geometries. You see it's not, not valid anymore, mm -hmm. fields. It's, of course, if we change geometry, then <laughs> the results get deleted. Uh, you have to rerun the simulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. or I need to, okay. to rerun to the original position mm -hmm. i think then it's you see i think it's zero millimeter that was the original mm -hmm. one now it's there again yeah okay if what i change something there? then well then what we already looked at is the field overlay yeah uh, we can define either use here a coordinate system or what i've shown already we could make a new coordinate system like here and then for example make the cut plane for example, uh, we take here a vertical cut plane, and then you see under field overlay, mm -hmm. we could look at different field quantities. Yeah? Again, if we look at human tissues, what is often interesting is the SAR, which stands for the specific absorption rate. And there are standards on this. And I think again, because this tells how many watts per kilogram of the human tissue will be absorbed. And this is a very, very important uh, metric for um, antenna engineers, especially if it's close to the human body. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you see here is, of course, it's, it's not a kilogram of tissue, but this is a kind of normalization. Yeah? If we would have one kilogram of tissue of that material at that position, yeah, it would absorb here uh, a certain value, a certain number of watts per kilogram. Yeah? But of course, this is cut down uh, only to a few cubic millimeters or cubic centimeters. Yeah, here you see that's where the the hot spot is. Yeah, but this is this is a very very important post processing uh, fields post processing quantity which antenna engineers need to know, especially if smart devices, which are close to the human body, if they get analyzed. Do you yeah. think we have, of all course, the companies yeah. really are, are doing all these measurements and analyses or not every company is doing this? Let's say if, you, if a company produces such an antenna, like a variable, yeah, it is a must that mm -hmm. they do some certification. Oh, yeah. okay. And the certification can be also done in the done in the lab using a dummy. Yeah, you can buy dummy objects, and from that you can measure it. It's it's really complicated. You need highly skilled people. You need to have the the measurement equipment, and it's really expensive to do so. And you have to do the measurement. That's fine. Yeah, but you can reduce the number of cycles by doing simulation. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah, and if we look at inside. Uh, the, for example, such a cut plane or inside such a object, yeah, we have different. Uh, the, what, what's more relevant for the industry is the average SAR, which does some some edge averaging over uh, some uh, cube shaped parts in the tissue. Yeah, this is according to the IEEE standards. Yeah, but we have some uh, functionalities included, which is really relevant according to these specific absorption rates. Yeah. This is a different topic, uh, which uh, could be addressed in a, in a, in a different session. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, I, I would be very happy know... if people leave mm -hmm. comments under this video, what they would like to see in 
future because I think this is like mm-hmm. super interesting. Yeah, it is definitely a hot topic. You know, every company that designs wearables, uh, or let's say, if even if you have a notebook or a smartphone and, and somehow the human body comes close to this transmitting device, then such kind of analysis gets it becomes very important. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's something which will not be addressed in a normal far field measurement in the chamber. This needs very special um, treatment and and respecting the properties of the human body. I would like to ask, uh, because sometimes people, <clears throat> after watching this kind of videos, they would like to know uh, what kind of software we use, but we already mentioned, but maybe also mentioned, yeah. where they can, or who, or, you know, how they can contact someone to ask more questions about this kind of software, for example. Well, uh, in this case, I can just can recommend go to the website, in this case, uh, the Unsoft, ANSYS website, and you can here really go and there are contact addresses. We have offices in, let's say, almost all large countries in Europe, North America, Asia, and you can get contact these, uh, the, the addresses which are there, yeah, or for example, um, you could contact me directly. I think I did not leave my my uh, email address I will put somewhere. I your link in profile. Right. That would be fine if you could do it afterwards. Then it's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I know this kind of software is expensive. Correct. Uh, I don't want to say expensive like exact always... price because we can really. I I don't think you can say exact price. Usually people. Oh. Uh, yeah. It, it's for sales. I, I, I cannot say, and I'm not yeah. allowed to do so. Yeah, I must say, expensive is always relative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is a good point. Maybe uh, if we come in closer to the end. Yeah. Yeah. If if I would sell the software, you know, I'm I'm exaggerating now a little bit. You know, if I would try to sell the software to my wife, yeah, she's not an RF engineer. Yeah, <laughs> for her, she wouldn't have a value out of this because she doesn't know what this antenna uh, pattern and the S parameter is. Yeah? For her, the value would be, it would be very, very expensive. Yeah? If I'm talking to a company who makes prototypes, for example, by doing uh, you, where you need a molded uh, plastic part or molded metal part, and even making the, the, the prototype casting yeah, costs maybe one single shot, yeah? maybe $20,000. Yeah? And even this is not the most important, most expensive. Yeah, the more expensive is if you get a delay for the market entry, then it really gets expensive. Yeah, a prototype and doing a measurement in the chamber yeah, costs maybe some ten thousand euro. It's expensive. Yeah, you can reduce the cycle. Yeah, the really expensive part is if your project gets delayed by three or four months mm-hmm. yeah, or half a year, yeah, because then sometimes we're talking about millions of euros. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And if you say relative to that, always say in relative yeah, on the application, it's not expensive mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah? I just want to point out, if you're in the academic world, there is a student's version free of charge, yeah? wow. which of course huh. is reduced which is reduced in the number of cells yeah i just want to mention it and we have entry levels yeah we have levels where you can uh, get the software for example for a certain time frame yeah there are models available so expensive is always a relative mm-hmm. term yeah and this is <laughs> my comments on this without saying an absolute price Okay. okay, I think that's good. It's uh, when when you mention it's a lot about time. I always imagine like sometimes people they they only think about the materials or or production costs or something. But it's also like uh, sometimes it may be uh, salaries of the engineers uh, which right. mm-hmm. need to redesign mm-hmm. something or. Yes. Spend time with debugging and finding what the problem yes. is, and and that's what is even more expensive than just yes. production of the board. This is true. This is another fact. This is the engineering time. You know, 
and I always encourage the, the users, do your work maybe here for the simulation, prepare the model in the late afternoon, yeah? set up parametric sweeps, optimization, let it run overnight. Yeah? When you go home, you drink your beer and you enjoy the evening, the software will work overnight for you. When you come back in the morning, you have a bunch of results and you can start with your engineering knowledge, interpret these results, look where are critical points maybe in your project, where is something missing, yeah? then do concentrate your work during the day and restart again the next after late afternoon. Yeah? And that's where such an engineering software, such a simulation software can really provide a complementary value to your to your work mm -hmm. uh, and your work time yeah okay and that's uh, very important uh, so do you have some other examples which we didn't go through or we went through all the examples which you have well there? i have more examples of course but let's say if we talk about these embedded antennas i think that's that's good we this is something we could uh, go through I have a, a smoke detector, yeah, but it's it's really the question if this is if this is more to show, yeah. I think I think we covered concept, a lot. Yeah. I think that mm -hmm. that yeah. can be like enough for mm -hmm. for the video, and and if people would like to see more examples or some other demonstrations or some specific cases, then we can make yeah. another video. Right, that could be done. Yeah, any user who who starts with the software yeah, can also um, just look uh, at the uh, at the project yeah and there are for example there are example files yeah so you could go and for a moment if we go to file and open examples and we go to hfss antennas there is for example a whole bunch of of different antenna mm -hmm. types which you could look at like uh, array antennas. Yeah? Also here some embedded antenna, horn antenna. There is a whole variety of, of uh, examples also for EMC. You know, uh, you see that here some, I, I think some motor or you have conducted emission you see on a table ESD tests. There are examples where you can start looking at it. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this means it's a, an easy entry level where, where people who want to make their first trials, yeah, just open it. There's some documentation besides it, and you can start with it. Oh, I would like to thank you so much, Marcus, because you're welcome. I, this is really exactly what I always wanted to make video about about this kind okay, of. Okay, that's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. That's everything for today's video. I would like to say thank you very much to Marcus for preparing all the materials and finding time to create this video. Thank you, Marcus. And if you have any questions or you would like to leave some feedback, then write your comments under this video. Okay, it helps a lot. I read all your comments. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button. If you would like to see my future videos, you know exactly what to do. Subscribe. When you subscribe, it helps a lot. Without your subscriptions, I can't create this kind of videos. No one would talk to me without your subscriptions. So thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and liking this video. And uh, see you next time. Bye.